Hey guys, Up of Light here, and in today's video, I shall present to you six tips and things that you should do that I guarantee will help you improve at Siege, and you should see an improvement in how you play by doing these things soon enough. If you guys find this video helpful, please consider subscribing, and if you want to go one step beyond my expectations, be sure to drop a like, as it really helps me beat the huge algorithm, and my channel will be discovered by many new people, which is something I really want to happen. And the question of the day for today's video will be, what platform do you play Siege on, PC, PlayStation, or Xbox? Let me know by posting a comment in the comments comment section down below. Anyway, now I think it's time to give you these tips so you can start improving at Siege. To start off this list, I want to talk about aspect ratios. The aspect ratio of your game can be really important and you should experiment with different options available. The aspect ratios I recommend using are 4 3, which is what I use, by 4, 16 by 9 or 16 by 10. Each of these will alter your view in game, with 4 3 and 5 4 stretching out horizontally and 16 10 stretching out vertically. The reason many use aspect ratios such as 4 3 and 5 4 is because it essentially gives you an illusion that the game is more zoomed in and character models are also thicker and easier to hit, which to some extent is true. However, the character models are not actually getting larger, it's just because the game is adapting to the change in aspect ratio. The same applies for 1610. However, rather than the character models looking larger, they look taller. It's all personal preference and you should go and test it out for yourself. I have also made a whole video on aspect ratio if you want to check it out, it will be in a card at the top right of your screen. Now, moving on to my next tip which ties in perfectly after talking about aspect ratios, is that you should experiment with changing the field of view, also known as FOV, to a higher value between 80 and 90. If you play at 60 FOV, you have such a disadvantage on PC, since many will have it set to a high value. What it does when you hire it is that you see a lot more of the game, almost like you change the focal length on a camera from normal mode to an ultra wide mode. The reason this is so helpful is because you get to see a lot more of the game. I'll put up a picture of 60 FOV versus 90 FOV so that you can see the difference for yourself. Personally, I play with 84 FOV, but that is just what I use to find the perfect FOV, I recommend you load up a T hunt or go into a custom game and play around with the FOV until you find a value that you're comfortable with. And you know what's more helpful than finding a perfect FOV? Well, let me give you a hint. It's by pressing the big old red button that says subscribe on it. As of now, only 3.8% of the people that are watching my videos are actually subscribed to the channel and it helps out so much more than you can imagine if you subscribe. We have a goal to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of 2021 and content creation is my dream job so if you want to help a brother out, you know what to do. Anyway, let's get back to the video so that you can improve at the game. My third tip is that you should really play around with your sensitivity. It is one of the most important parts of your aim and can be what causes you to have some cracked or poor aim. There are two different types of sensitivities within Siege. You either have a fast or a slow sensitivity. With sensitivity, your mass DPI is also important if you're on PC. Having a high DPI such as 1600 will result in very fast and sharp movements, however your accuracy will not be all too great, unless you're to kill of course. The industry standard for mass DPI is from 400 to 800. Personally, I use it 100 dpi and 10 horizontal and vertical for my sensitivity in game. For you people on controller or console, I can't speak for you much, however there are two great content creators that I recommend. One of these is Royal Penguin which plays with a controller on PC and is an absolute god with it, or your alternative is Revolt Robbie. I'll link their channels in the description down below and I'm sure you can grab some inspiration from them. Similar to your FOV, hop into a custom game and adjust your sensitivity to your liking. Try it out by flicking between two objects and see what you're most precise with. For my next tip, I recommend recommend experimenting with different reticle colors, which you can change in the accessibility tab in the settings. Amongst the most popular colors are green, purple, red and cayenne. I have tried each one of those colors and each are really great. I currently use green with 90 opacity, which is a really good general opacity for each color. However, if you disagree, remember that this is all personal preference and you should change it to fit your playstyle and liking. One color I would recommend not using is white, since it can get lost with the background of a map, especially if you're trying to peek outside or are playing coastline. For well, my next tip, this is a general tip that will help you if you're using headphones to play, which I mean you should be using anyway, and if you're not, then how do you even play the game? I recommend putting your audio mode to night mode. What this does is makes the volume of gunshots and explosions lower, however it really makes it easier to hear footsteps, even when they are out walking. I have gotten so many kills just from listening out for footsteps, so trust me, this is one of the must do's and I promise it will help you improve. For well, my next tip, I want to go through some of the interface settings, which I recommend. To start off with, turn off player names, and thank me later. Later. Although at the time of this recording, there is a bug where names come up regardless of if you have the setting on or off. The next setting to turn off is player outlines. This can be a little distracting, so having as little distractions as possible really helps out. Talking about distractions, I would highly recommend turning off show versus players, which is the pop-up that shows up to show you how many players are left on a team when someone dies. I find this to be a really distracting thing since I always take my eyes off the reticle to look up at the pop-up and it could get you killed. So trust me, put it off. The final one I would 
would remove is the health bar at the bottom. It can get really distracting when it starts to flash if you're under 20 HP. However, this is definitely not one you have to remove. If you like to see the exact HP you have, you can keep it. However, if you can understand a general idea of what HP you are at, you can take it off. You can anyway see your health at the top of the screen where it shows the operators. And so that runs it up for this video. If you learned something new, let me know by commenting and dropping a like down below. Anyway, that'll be it from me today. I hope you enjoyed and peace oh, out. It does less damage. The legs, yeah, so the legs and arms, you will do less damage to them if you hit them there than if you hit them in the torso. In the torso, you'll do the damage like states the weapon does. And in the head, it's just a one-shot kill. Fuck, I was... I thought they were just gonna wait there like that. Oh, oh fuck, not yet. Is that yes on the you have to, like, back it on? Oh my god. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they shoot me from, like, the other side of them. That's, like, the only place I'm not so... Oh no, don't mind. There's one oh, there, no, like, in the bottom. That's another guy, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, one's on the repair. Oh. That wasn't very smart, was it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, what? What? Wait a second, so so Sweet. Oh, that was sweet. I'm pretty sure I also drove the name. Oh, that's Nobody's going to the top of the thing, so they don't know how to counter. They don't even know I'm up here. Oh well, of course they do, never mind. Oh, oh. oh dude, okay, I'm gone. I'm cutting. Dude, there's one up here. Oh, that's probably, yeah. I kind of would. Uh, I'd say, for your placement games, <laughs> don't think that if you place good in your placement games that's a good thing but that's not gonna be your final rank all right so don't play sh only off of your placement games trust me you're gonna regret because then you're gonna let's say you do get plat right you're gonna be a plat and then you end up i don't know let's say you lose a couple games you end up going low on 